What did ordinary Americans during the Second World War know about the Nazi-run death camps in Europe? What did they believe and what were their thoughts about it? Earlier, I covered what the Germans knew about the death camps. Information about what the American public knew is much more accessible since America, contrary to Germany at the time, was a democracy. In this video, you're going to learn about what the American people knew about the death camps. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, my name is Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher. I cover history for you. If you find it interesting, consider subscribing. Also hit that notification bell. And if you want to support me, you can do so via Patreon or via PayPal. The links are in the description. When 1942 came around, over 1 million Jews had been shot in Eastern Europe by the Einsatzgruppen. These shootings started right after the Germans invaded the USSR in June 1941. Although in 1939, Poles and Polish Jews were murdered in mass shootings as well. These shootings were ineffective. Gas fans were introduced, but also these were too time consuming. In January, the one day conference took place. Here, the final solution of the so-called Jewish question was presented. Extermination camps were to be set up to transport the European Jews with the goal of total extermination. Jews were no longer deported to the ghettos, but to the extermination camps such as Sobibor, Treblinka and Auschwitz-Birkenau, located in German-occupied Poland. The death camps had to be a secret, according to Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler. The secret leaked out sooner than he expected. The Polish government in exile and diplomats from Switzerland got information from secret agents and reported extensively on the topic. By the end of 1942, the secret of the death camps for sure was not a secret anymore to the outside world. How did the governments of Great Britain and the US react to this? The first fact was officially presented by the Polish government in exile in June 1942 which stated that 700,000 Polish Jews were already killed by the Nazis. Near the end of 1942, it became clear the killings were part of a systematic plan and Jewish public figures as well as the Polish government in exile wanted the British and the US governments to explicitly condemn the killings, which happened in a declaration on December 17, on 1942. In the previous videos, we talked about how the secret of the death camp leaked out exactly and what the Allied response was. If you'd like to learn more about that, I'll put links in the end cards of the video. So how did the US public react to this? What about the American public? To what extent were they aware of what befell the Jews in Eastern Europe? For that, we also have to look at the American press. Let's start with that. In June 1942, it was made public that in German-occupied Poland, 700,000 Jews had been murdered. The American newspapers did report this, but it was in the inside pages, except for the New York Herald Tribune, which put it on the front page. It was the same case when, in November 1942, Rabbi Stephen Weiss revealed the content of the Rickner telegram. Only five of the 19 major American newspapers put it on the front page. And some newspapers took some reservation by stating, 2 million Jews killed, according Weiss. The New York Times placed a huge article about numbers of murdered Jews in Poland. It was reported that Jews from the Warsaw Ghetto were deported and sent to special camps to be murdered there. Also Auschwitz was mentioned, all on page 10. The Allied declaration in December 1942 didn't make much impact either. In the years after that, here and there appeared publications about the persecuted Jews in Europe, but barely anything appeared in the headlines. And if the fate of the Jews was mentioned, it was linked to other groups that were targeted also. What did reach the front page was the German massacre of the Czechs in Lidic as a reprisal for the death of SS leader Heydrich. Just as we saw with the Allied leaders, there was a generalization of the Jewish suffering by the American press. It's true that Jews were not the only victims of Nazi terror. Think of the mentally disabled, Roma and Sinti, gays, Jehovah Witnesses, not to mention whole populations of Slavs. It can be said that the Jews were the biggest group that was persecuted that severely and systematically. So how can we explain this reserved attitude by the American press. Powerlessness 
did play a role. What were Americans here and now going to do about it? Also, anti-Semitism. Not necessarily anti-Semitism among the journalists themselves, but more out of fear of anti-Semitism of the public. Even Jewish American organizations, they downplayed the facts to avoid any semblance of dual loyalty. Even American Jewish organizations explicitly mentioned that Jews were not the only victims of Nazi terror. Disbelief and incomprehension played a role too. How could a modern state like Germany be that cruel to its citizens? Many couldn't believe Hitler was that irrational. Why murdering millions of people? Well, you could put these people to work. It didn't make any sense. In 1943, an American journalist was invited by the Soviets to visit Bab Yar, near the Ukrainian capital Kyiv, which was recently retaken by the Red Army. The American journalist had a feeling he was being used and believed the eyewitness he spoke and the remains he was shown were false. In this case, it is understandable because the Soviet government, let's put it mildly, was not the most trustworthy government. Also, when the Soviets took an almost intact Majdanek near the Polish city of Lublin, including a gas chamber, an American newspaper wrote that this news had too many similarities with the horror propaganda of the First World War, where stories about German corpse factories were spread. What played a part was that the American public had felt lied to after the First World War. When the news of German atrocities in the Second World War was spread, these stories reminded the people of the First World War. When the most horrible stories of German conduct in Belgium and Northern France were also told. And as I covered in a video not too long ago, it is true that the Germans behaved brutal during their invasion of Belgium. Around 6,000 Belgian and North French civilians were killed by German forces in the summer month of 1914. But most of these stories were severely exaggerated and served propaganda purposes. After the First World War, especially the US public felt lied to by the British press. It tricked them into entering a war, which they eventually won, but with little gain, as was shown by the isolationist response by the US government after the European peace treaties were signed. American historian Deborah Lipstadt, who wrote the book Beyond Belief, she wrote about the yes but attitudes. Some facts of the horrible news were accepted, other dismissed. It went a little bit like this. Yes, terrible things are happening, but not that terrible. Yes, many Jews have died, but most died because of hardships instead of murder. Yes, some Jews have been murdered, but not in gas chambers. Yes, some Jews have been gassed. But many other people too. In the US, opinion polls were held during the war. Shortly after the Allied Declaration in December 1942, polls were held to find out if the American people believed these reports. Less than half believed it, almost 30% did not, and one quarter had no opinion. Two years later, another opinion poll was held. Shortly after many newspapers covered Auschwitz, the public was asked if the Germans have killed many people, Jews were not explicitly mentioned, in camps and to make an estimate of the number of people killed. Many people believed 100,000 or less, one quarter had no ID and one out of ten believed one million or more. In May 1945, after the camps were discovered and or liberated, the same question was asked. Many people claimed one million. This shows that the American people were not up to date about the exact numbers and severely underestimated them. And it is understandable because it is hard to envision these enormous numbers. 100,000, 200,000, 1 million, 2 million. It's hard to comprehend. American activists later recalled they were not able to break through the wall of disbelief of the American public. Jewish Hungarian author Arthur Kusler explained. A dead dog disrupts our balance and digestion. Three million murdered Jews in Poland cause little more than mild discomfort. Statistics don't bleed. It's the detail that counts. 
Kushler did not receive much response. Some accused him of spreading atrocity propaganda and others claimed he better should save his energy for rebuilding a better world once the war was over. The American case shows us that the availability of detailed and accurate information does not equal the amount of knowledge of the public. Yes, the American public knew Jews were being murdered in the East, but they didn't see this as a planned extermination, more like a series of massacres. They couldn't grasp the intention of the Nazis. Why slaughtering so many innocent people? They saw atrocities, terror, and murder instead of genocide. And it's interesting to draw parallels with today. I have a lot of people who comment underneath my videos, stuff like, it's the same as the this or that, or nothing has changed. And I often dismiss these comments as oversimplifications. But to be fair, sometimes there is some truth in it. And you can dismiss the American people back then as dumb or ignorant. But try to imagine, you had years of economic hardships behind you because of the Great Depression. Now your country is dragged into a European war again. And then you hear all kinds of atrocity stories of horrible things that are happening in a region far, far away from you. In the Netherlands, we refer to this as a ver van mijn bed show, a far from my bed show, which means that something occurs so far away, it's hard to envision it, to comprehend it. And when it comes down to these things, people have the tendency to downplay it. More like, it can be that bad, right? To conclude with a very cynical quote of Soviet dictator and mass murderer Joseph Stalin, who once said, a single death is a tragedy, a million deaths is a statistic. Thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Liam Devlin, Damian Wallace, Connor, Philip Jordan, Jakob Musland, Nick Terranova, Haley Berry, Mark Little Hill, Janusz Dojinkiewicz, Joanne Justin Trebel, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, Susanna Di Bella, John Beach, Luis Peschera, Fernando Lopez Ojeda and Mike West. If you're interested in this topic, I have other videos for you as well about the secret of the death camps, how it leaked out. Click right here and hear about the response of the allied leaders. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. All the best and never forget.